I'm in beautiful Connor, Washington for the LaConnor Guitar Festival. And there are some amazing luthiers here. Uh, functional art is what I like to call it. And some amazing guitarists, especially uh, finger style picking and uh, acoustic players. And it's gonna open up here in about an hour and we'll have a look. We're here for the whole weekend, it's a three day festival but you can also uh, get uh, single day tickets. But uh, my wife and I are here uh, for the entire three days. My friends and those that follow my YouTube channel know that I've transitioned from digital media and teaching to the music scene, including guitar building and guitar playing for the past three to four years. It's what I always wanted to do when I was a kid. I've been dabbling with YouTube, and social media for about 12 years and in the past three years while teaching at a local community college I've created short videos on upgrading and building parts casters, building lap steels, repairing guitars, trying out gear and taking guitar lessons, also doing some pickup winding. All mainly electric guitar oriented. I have quite a collection of Stumac tools and have refretted a few electric guitars. Since the beginning of this year, I've been interested in acoustic guitars. What makes them sound the way they do, including resonator style guitars? When I found that there was a guitar festival in Laconner, Washington, my wife and I decided to make the trip. I'm originally from South Seattle, and I've always loved Laconner and the surrounding towns, and including the Olympic Peninsula. LaConnor is located a little more than 80 miles northwest of the Seattle SeaTac Airport and is about an hour and a half drive, depending on the traffic. It is a delightful small town. Known as both an artist and a boater's paradise with many different restaurants, including a local microbrewery, art galleries, boutique shops, and very nice hotels and B&Bs. For more information about LaConnor, visit lovelaconnor.com and I'll provide that link below in the notes. This video is a small sampling of the LaConnor Guitar Festival and what I experienced. I discovered amazing luthiers, virtuoso guitar players, and of special interest to me were the mini concerts where world-class guitarists demonstrated the instruments made by the fine luthiers displaying their guitars at the festival. Being a guitar geek, I've included a little interaction between the luthiers and the musicians during these concerts. If you'd like to explore the entire festival events, including participating luthiers, guitarists, vendors, and workshops, as well as past festivals. I've included that link below in the notes. A little background about the festival. The LaConnor Guitar Festival was started by luthier Brent McElroy and his wife Shirley McKella. They started it because they felt there was a need for good guitar festivals on the West Coast and they had the experience of attending many festivals. Also, Shirley had some experience working with other kinds of festivals, too. She was an outstanding organizer, and you will find many of the LaConnor community speak very highly of her, and not just guitar builders and musicians. After a hard-fought battle with cancer, Shirley passed away in early 2021, and the LaConnor Guitar Festival was suspended for 2020 and 2021. Brent McElroy continued the festival in her honor. Here's what guitarist Tim Farrell had to say when I asked him about his involvement. Yes, I helped Shirley set up the music scheduling and then helped Brent with whatever I could when he restarted it on his own. Everyone who has been involved over the years have been very supportive.
Good race. Race trains. All right, thanks, man. Functional art. tension from the soundboard. You know, and it's not very effective right now. It's sort of like, a, you know, it's like running out of ammunition at the front line. Two is the same exact FG, but with our tailpiece, um, you know, the strings are still in a, in a ready position. They can, you know, impart um, vibration to the soundboard. And as you can see, the soundboard can be made of anything. It can be paper, gossamer, um, a well-braced top top. Um, even the term guitar, you know, top, top bracing, um, there's a term top bracing and then there's, uh, there's uh, tone, there are tone bars and it appears that most traditional, especially x brace guitars, they have a couple of big timbers and then they have these little delicate things that they kind of, it's, a, like, it's like an adjunct, an afterthought, like let's make it sound good now. So this is sort of the opposite. Let's start with a functioning guitar and then let's have a skilled a uh, guitar builder add only what he needs, only tone bars. So it's not totally solid. I don't know if you can see through it or not. But it's uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so I'm just gonna play a, a bunch of different things and like kind of give you an idea of the different tones. I'm just gotta keep every, everything nice and clean. We're not gonna crank anything up. And uh, we didn't bring the Marshall stack with them. So. <laughs> 
So let's start with. Uh, I'm using the bridge pickup right now for in case anybody was wondering. So uh, I'm going to continue with the tune I love to play. Um, it's a Papathini tune called Travel. It's a really nice, calm, beautiful song. And I hope you like it.
And I first met Jim up at Montreal Jazz Festival, and it just so happened that, and this was probably 10 years ago, maybe, or something like that, 12? Yeah, something like that. And, um, and it just so happened that he had come out, and something happened, and he, he had no place to stay, and I had a hotel that had two beds. So I was like, yeah, come on over. And, um, and I came back to the, to the hotel one day, and it was, it was early. I think I went out to breakfast, and you were maybe still sleeping or something like that. And I walk in the room, and he's got his, one of his guitars, and he's, he's got it on his bed with him. He's got his arm wrapped around his guitar, and he's sound asleep with his, with his arm around it. So I took a picture of it, and I posted it, you know, and it just went, it went all over the place. And that was, that was how Jim and I met. And I remember thinking, it's like, he loves his guitars that much. They're worth checking out at least, you know. And then um, absolutely fall in love with the nylon strings. That's what I, I play principally. And and this is one of his that is doing that. So I'll play a couple songs maybe, and then um, and then you come yeah, up and sure. talk about the guitar a little bit. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
so that was uh, Bill Evans to me in a sweet way. This next one, uh, you'll probably recognize this as Gigi.
vai, vai. Se dança samba, se dança samba, vai. Se dança samba, se dança samba, vai, 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 vai. Se dança samba, se dança samba, vai. I've danced all the dances before But samba's the one my heart calls out for So dance a samba, so dance a samba Bye 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 So dance a samba, so dance a samba bye. in 1974, this old lumber guy came out of the woods and sawed a big, huge piece of cedar, and he came and we bought a bunch of it. It looked nice, and, and so we took a fro and split it, and, and, so, and then we waxed the ends, and I left half that wood in, in storage for 40 years in that condition, just big old bolts of wood, and so not just in the last probably six or seven years I resawed it. So it's been 40, it's, it's 40, 50 years old, and who knows how long it was out down in the woods. Uh, it just, that wood has just been the best stuff that, that I've ever ever seen. It's got some nice little subtle mineral streaks in it too that I think is really attractive. Uh, ebony fingerboard. Uh, it's a Hauser style guitar. Uh, uh, Herman Hauser. Uh, he's the senior. This guitar is copied after uh, 1943 Hauser. Uh, the guy uh, that I know, uh, Jeff Elliott, who is my maestro, actually uh, dis dissected a, a whole uh, the 1943 instrument and took all the measurements and everything off of it, uh, and so. I have a real accurate uh, the way it was the original one was made, uh, and it's worked for me. The pet bracing pattern and everything has worked for me. Although I use some different woods than than Hauser did, uh, it it works. Um, and then of course Peter is a great musician and he makes everything sound good. But uh, the, you know he's playing a jazz style you know on the instrument. And it's, it's a classical guitar, but it just shows you what different things can be played on it. Uh, so I lowered the action a little bit for his style. Uh, and you had Anna playing it like recently, Anna, right? Anna Vidovich played the guitar last, uh, well, last year a little bit, if you know who she is. She's a virtuoso. She's a wonderful. Willie plays her. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yep. There's a lot of a lot of nylon string players, you know, that don't that don't necessarily play classical. Right, you know? right, right. So that just shows you what we, you know, you don't have to play classical on a classical. It's well, Willie Nelson plays a nylon string instrument. So there's other things you can do with it. You don't have to play. You, you can buy it and play other things with it. My the tuners and stuff that I use on on my instruments also. Are pretty high end. They're handmade uh, tuners out of out of Italy. Uh, Nicola uh, Alessi makes them, and 
I mean, I think they're 600 bucks a set or something. And you can spend more on them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, awesome. so that's, that's what I do. Awesome. So come right. down and see me. Yeah, I have like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, two minutes. No, 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 that's perfect. It's, it's the stuff they need to know, you know. So maybe do something completely different and very short. Um, I'd like to introduce Jack Dwyer from Port Townsend, Washington, virtuoso, multi-instrumentalist, extraordinaire, kind enough to fit in for, sit in for Eli, who had a family emergency he had to attend to. Uh, Jack dropped what he's doing and came to, came to my rescue. And uh, thank you, Jack, for being a job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to maybe uh, do a little bit of finger picking now. You said that was a Sitka spruce top? It's yeah. a, bear, a bear claw Sitka spruce okay. with, a, with a hand applied. Yeah. So do one of these. So these have been up on the stage um, yeah. right. in case you haven't been over to see them. Okay. What's the back of size? A clara walnut. Okay. Could you stay that top? I did it. Is that the one that was rubbed or? That one was rubbed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that one was sprayed. Spray. And one of these just got strings on it for the first time four days ago. I'll, I'll play this one next. This one's probably was a few months old. That's, yeah.
fingerprinting song here. Hear what that sounds like. So that last one was a original tune I made up there. Mm -hmm. It's another original. one just got strings on it a few days ago I really like the low end on this one you can probably hear it this one's a cannon
feel and sound. I, I like them all. Um, this one I feel like is maybe the most balanced, you know, um, whereas this one kind of has almost more of a dreadnought feel to it in terms of that low end, um, which is definitely possible to get out of a guitar of this, this uh, yeah, size. And, um,
it rain, let it pour, let it rain a whole lot more. Cause I've got them deep river blues. Let the rain drive right on, let the waves sweep along. Cause I've got them deep river blues. Yes, I've got them deep river blues. more minutes here and figured I'd just open it up to people out there if you got any questions if you want to hear me play one of the guitars again play them all again <laughs> <laughs> I can do that Let's start over <laughs> yeah from the top here we go see I think I finger picked and flat picked on every one okay. can I ask you a quick question sure so the tops on all three are Sitka's? They're Sitka, yeah. The, the, yeah these two uh, have a particular bear claw gotcha. formation, yeah, yeah. but they're both, they're all Sitka. Yeah. Okay.
play uh, Gary Lewandowski's Cedar Mountain Mandolin's Arch Tops. So more to come right now. He's playing the next show. Yeah, You're yeah, playing the next show. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so I got an assortment of mandolins and, and arch topped instruments up here. Um, these are all Lewandowski's. Um, got an L5 style guitar. Got the A model. We've got the F model mandolin, and uh, this is an octave mandolin over here. I'll be I'll be working my way around the stage. <laughs> talking about this mandolin earlier, this mandolin, um, I feel like that's a pretty unique sound for an F5. It's got kind of that round or low end that you might expect almost from an A model, but it still has the bark of the F5.
back to all these, but I'm just going to work my way through so you get a chance to hear everything. <coughs> Is that instrument tone bars or hex prints? It's tone bars. It's the same thing with the uh, same, same thing. <laughs> you know about this one? That one's tone bars as well. Okay. This is the, this is the octave mandolin here. Thank you. 
to guitar land here. <laughs> plug-in as well. Is it a pickup in the bridge or? It's a K and K. Okay. Uh, yeah.
such a sacred thing to me. I can't believe it's just a burning memory. Hardy. It's similar. Martin does what's called a bird's beak. Yeah. Um, this is this is uh, more of a classical uh, B joint. Right. That's what it is. Yeah. But I love yeah. the the ebony back plate. Oh, the contrast is so good. <laughs> is this bird's eye? That's bird's eye. Bird's eye maple. Yeah. It's roasted. When I was sanding it, it smelled like maple syrup. Oh. It was really cool. It was really cool. Yeah. Which to a Canadian person is very important. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> How long have we got? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Did you say that the, the inlay on the neck there was out of brass? That's, That's brass. brass. Yeah. And there's brass purfling on the binding on the neck. There's little brass accents, a little on the bridge, the rosette, mm. it's on the headstock. And yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I, like I said, I got bit by the bug of like having the ebony with the brass, and for better or worse, I, I just like it too much that I'm going to have to keep doing it. <laughs> so what was, the, what was the thinking around the design, where you, where you placed the, the inlays on the neck? Well, just, I mean, the 12th fret is obvious, and, and the 5th fret, like, I, I prefer like a, uh, like a simple, minimalist design. Yeah. And the first couple of guitars, the first couple of acoustics, I just had it on the 12th fret, and I felt like something was missing. Yeah. And so, you know, stealing from the classical vein, it's like the 12th and the 5th there where you put your markers to the way. Um, but on the side, it has all the position markers that are yeah. typical, the, the 3, 5, 7, 9, you know, etc. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I can't see the fret. Face. Yeah. Anyway, so it's like, but so exactly. it looks nice. Though. These are for. <laughs> exactly. Landing lights. <laughs>
How many? How many did you make a year? Not many. Uh, for the acoustics, maybe two or three. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the acoustics, just with my schedule, I think four would be max that I could make in a year. Wow. Yeah. So they are exclusive, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Is everybody in Vancouver goes to Nicole to get their get <laughs> That's true. I, I do. Yeah. I do have, I have, You're in Vancouver, right? Well, yeah. we are now, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Frank actually used to work with me a little bit through do electronics. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I actually have a 12-month wait list for repairs. Yeah. Um, for repairs? For repairs. For repairs. Yeah. Isn't it in the mountain? Yeah. 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 Anytime um, she tries to sell them another one. <laughs> That's a good business model. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, right. That's yeah. funny. Actually, but I, I take all the stuff I've learned from repairing, and it, I mean, when I when I'm building the acoustics, for me, it's such a a work of love. So yeah. I, I pour a lot into them. I haven't counted the hours because right. I'd rather not know. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, it, it's like I I try and build that the acoustics so they don't need a lot of repair. Um, you know, I, I take certain de design and building elements just. All the traditional stuff that I think is the best, and all the modern stuff that I think is the best, and yeah. put it in That's there. interesting. Yeah. To build a guitar that won't need much of the way of maintenance, you think you can overbuild it right now, it's very right. clunky. Yeah. This is incredibly light. This but, is a featherweight guitar. I don't know. Yeah. It weighs 3.93 pounds. Wow. <laughs> about what I weighed back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I never a weighed long much. time ago. <laughs> it's a real delight to play. stream from from the front seat of my old Toyota Corolla. <laughs> <laughs> Move one degree, like one inch too far in either direction. Yeah. It's all gonna go down. But, um, thanks so much for being here. Hope you're having a good time. Um, my name is Sean McGowan. I'm gonna play a short set of tunes for you. Uh, I'm gonna play mostly uh, songs derived from the Great American Songbook, Jazz Standards, and hopefully some songs that you'll recognize, as well as a couple of originals. I'd like to mention that, uh, of course, this being a guitar festival, I am playing today uh, with uh, Tad Brown, who is right here, front and center. Woohoo! Yeah. So he is the luthier behind these three beautiful guitars and more. So um, I'm going to play till roughly 3:30, but the show goes till 4 o'clock. So he'll. Uh, well, actually, he won't be back there because he's got to catch a flight in Seattle. So if you have some questions. Um, we can maybe make some time for questions now. If, if there's a, how many of you are guitar players? Guitar players, yeah. Okay, good. That's good. Beautiful so if you guitars. have any guitar-specific questions, we can. Dad can take those before he runs off to catch a, a flight. Uh, so I'll be I'll be playing through various iterations of his uh, arch top models, including this one, which is my personal guitar, and. Um, this actually made its debut a few years ago here at the La Conner Festival. It's very exciting. So I'll start uh, playing a couple tunes on this. And then brand new for the festival is this beautiful red arch top that Tad built with a really cool, interesting dual source uh, pickup system to uh, get a chance to hear that. And then finally, this really beautiful oval hole acoustic arch top. Um, so we can, we can talk about any of those as you like. And then I also want to mention that I am playing through a Henriksen Bud amplifier. And Peter Henriksen is, there you are, he's also right here. So if you have any amp questions, we're, this is a really cool thing because we have the two makers right in the same room. So I am going right into this, uh, well you can kind of see it down here, but it's basically the whole amplifier fits into a little bag just this size. It weighs about two pounds. Super convenient to take anywhere you need to go in the world. Um, two inputs so you can accommodate guitars or one guitar, one voice, and um, and just plug it right into the PA system, which is exactly what I'm doing now. And also, thank you so much for their sound reinforcement here. You guys work hard. Thank you. All right, I'll play. 
play a couple of tunes and then, then we'll go from there.
Boy, it's sure is lovely being here. And um, how many of you live nearby? Close enough. Close Seattle. enough. Seattle. Seattle. That's, that's close enough. Close yeah. Enough. Yeah. It's quite beautiful this time of year. It's just amazing. Hilo, Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. It's. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's plenty lush there too. It's. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of things that just don't grow in Colorado that are uh, in abundance in Hawaii and here. Uh, well, any questions? about the cars or the amp. Any any questions that any of the players in the house want to ask? Don't be shy. Talk about wood, pickups, electronics. Yeah, what kind of pickups? Are there? Chisels, tools. <laughs> That's more intense. This, in this, uh, what you're hearing right now is a Ron Ellis P90. Huh? And I have a little, we're just talking about single coils, right? I have a little pedal that actually Tim Lurch, a great Seattle guitar player, a good friend of mine, um, you can't see it, but it's just a little pedal that comes in handy. It's called the Humpty Bugger, and that actually, I think, pretty solidly eliminates the 60 cycle hum. I like P90s, I like single coil pickups. Um, my other guitar of Tad's is not here at the moment, but it has a Charlie Christian style pickup in it, big bar. And it's a great sound, but also can be noisy if you're you know, playing in an environment like this where you know, power, power isn't necessarily ideal. Um, this guitar has, what you'll hear, uh, is, has a uh, ultratonic transducer system developed by James May, who a lot of people know from the Tone Dexter. Uh, yeah. And then this guitar is a dual source, and um, maybe I'll play that right now actually, we can get that fired up. Thank you so much. Yeah, if I move at all, it's going to be a disaster. <laughs> like, it's going to be a domino effect of yeah. guitars and cables and me all going down at once. Thank you. All right, let me get this plugged in and fired up. So this guitar also has a P90 pickup, so a single coil. I think Tad and I are both believers in single coil sound. Yeah. I mean, whether you have a Telecaster or Strat, uh, old school box, you know, or beautiful acoustic arch top, uh, single coils are really nice. Um, so this actually is a blend of a P90 sound, like with a blue guitar, and the ultratonic system of this guitar. So let me get that plugged in and you'll be able to hear it. Are, are these P90s potted? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, actually, that one is not, but this one is. Plotted in epoxy. Yeah, that one is just an old school coil. Wow. So it's able to vibrate and be a little bit microphonic. Yeah. Gives it a little sweeter. It's like a 50s style. Yeah. It's just beautiful. And yeah, really nice tone. Yeah. And your finishes are incredible. Well, thanks. I mean, that's, I think that's, that's a great thing that Tad's known for, aside from just being so easy and lovely to play though. These instruments are very comfortable, they're ergonomic, they just fit in your body just so wonderfully. Um, and they sound great and they're built to be played, but, but the finish is just like a cherry on top. It's just incredible. So you can see like, do you call this like a honey amber? Is this your amber yeah, finish? Yeah, something like that. It's kind of cool, like we were looking at it last night, it almost looks vintage, it's almost like you cosmetically aged the top. It looks yeah. like it could be a really old guitar. <laughs> and, um, what remind? What are the woods on this one? Again? That's um, Adirondack spruce, uh, red maple, and African blackwood. Wow, that's so pretty. And the African blackwood is also on this guitar. Yeah. And then you can see like this. This guitar is actually a lapis lazuli. This is a real. This is real lapis lazuli that Tad gets as a powder, and he turns it into a finish. But isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that look like? It's like the water. It's incredible. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So, um, it's Chilean, actually. Yeah, it's a gemstone mineral. Yep. What are the other differences between the blue and the red guitar? Are you talking about the pickups? The, um, the blue one has a uh, Ron Ellis P90. The red one has a uh, Kent Armstrong, but it's floating. Uh, in addition to the ultratonic. So what you're hearing now is the ultratonic system. Um, let me do a quick tuning here and then I'll play. So what you're hearing right now is actually just, just the transducer, the James May system in, the, in this.
So it sounds like an acoustic guitar. system is that you can you can really shape the, the body of the tone however you want so if I just that's just the uh, transducer I can bring in a little bit of the P90 there's just a touch so that the bottom end is nice bigger and then I can bring in a little bit more of the P90 now we're here. So you sound a little bit more electric jazz. It still has this nice clarity of the transducer. Or if you want to take the transducer out, you just take it out. And that's just the sound of the P90. So you have a lot of tonal options here, which is really, I think, a winner. <laughs> back into the signal. Bring up the P90 just a little bit. I don't know, to me it's, it sounds like mixing colors, you know? Any artists in the room? Any painters? Right? So you're constantly like working on colors and taking, getting that together. That's what I hear with this.
switch over, before we do run out of time, I'm going to switch, I'm going to take a second, switch over to this beautiful guitar. So give me a quick second on that. Thank you, sir. Wow, it's like, this guitar is so light, it's like, whoa, we went right <laughs> really nice. Super comfortable. I was actually playing this guitar on the couch last night in our uh, rental apartment, and it was really nice. So with this guitar being primarily an acoustic arch top, this just has the transducer system in it. So the same system, same setup that was in the red, but without the, but without the deck pickup. This is, oh, there we go. So there's a very discreet volume inside the sound hole. So you can, you do have control over that. It's not just on and go. So it's got a really nice, you know, if you're just kicking around the house and you just want to play in a nice intimate acoustic way. It's just a beautiful, rich acoustic tone.
No, that's a, a that's a beautiful uh, solo piano piece by Duke Ellington called The Single Petal of a Rose and part of his Queen Suite that he dedicated to uh, Queen Elizabeth back in the 70s. And as the story goes, he improvised that while he was at Buckingham Palace. And the Queen came in and he just played that on the piano and that was it. But, yeah, he went over, he, he um, you know, it was said about Duke Ellington, he could, he could spend time, he could have dinner with anybody. It could be like, you know, down home in the middle of Mississippi and, uh, and at Buckingham Palace with the royal family and he was equally at home with everybody. It was a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful piece of music. And I hope you do, like after I play, just come on up and, and feel free to take a look at these instruments. But you'll notice that some of the aesthetics in here are very much inspired by uh, violin and, and cello, the three, right? Is that correct? Yep. With your tailpiece and bridge design. Very light. How much do these guitars weigh? That one is under five pounds. Less than five pounds. Yeah. For, uh, easy on the back. Mm. <laughs> Which is really important. And how about this one? Just over five because of the pickup. Yeah, the pickup's had a little weight. And then that one's, I think, exactly five. About wow. you know, roughly. Yeah. So they're nice. They're they're ergonomic. They're they're easy on the body. Um, very portable. Very comfortable. So yeah. So an oval hole and the F hole. I am going to. Uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to switch back to the blue one. A couple more standards for you. 
And the amp was, again? I'm sorry? The amp was? The amp is a Henriksen okay. Bud model. And so Peter is right over there, Henriksen, R-I-K-S-E-N. And uh, Peter and I are both located uh, just outside of Denver uh, in Arvada, Colorado. And uh, this is, he has a very popular model of an amp called the Bud, and um, that there, it's available as a combo, which is about this big, with just a little six-inch speaker in it, but very loud and powerful and by ever need. And right now I'm playing through, he has some of those down at Maple Hall, where the show is, but right now I'm playing through just the head version of the Bud, so it's exactly the same, identical, but just without the speaker. So you can plug into a house system. So it's like going this. into the PA right yep, here? Yep, I'm just running it right into the PA. But basically you're hearing, you're, what you're hearing is the combination of, of Taz, guitars, and, and Peter's amp. Wow. What was that last the, song that you played? The finish oh, reminds the me of Chihuly Glass. Number one. The blue one. Oh, yeah, I actually used um, Lapis Lazuli uh, gemstone. You ground it? Uh, yeah, I buy it as a powder. It's a powdered mineral. <laughs> I mix it into the finish and spray it. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> All right, I think I have time for one or two more for you today. Back in standard tuning, you were here watching Matt Thomas play. I don't know how he does it, he's like radical tunings in between every song. That's <laughs> an amazing thing to do. I like to stick mostly in standard, but the, but the last two pieces I played on the acoustic arch top have a, a drop tuning, a lower tuning, so um, just to try to get some of those piano, and then of course the low cello notes and the cello suite. from um, uh, featured from a CD that I did a few years ago um, uh, all solo guitar playing the music of My Fair Lady one of my favorite uh, productions and shows and, and music by Lerner and Lowe and uh, so this was this first song I'll play for you is um, one of my favorite scenes uh, when um, Julie Andrews or, or Audrey Hepburn depending on which version you're, you're watching uh, with with the unbelievable garish Rex Harrison uh, working on their their diction and language and accent. Um, so this is uh, my version of Rain in the Spain. And uh, what I thought it would be fun to do is is capture this song with kind of a ska feel, and uh, but also maneuver into the ballroom scene. If you can remember that, it's a pretty like fun raucous scene. So uh, I'm gonna play that followed by. Um, one of the, the climactic points in the show, uh, I could have danced all night. <laughs>
Thank you.